Good afternoon, and uh, this is actually generally Jesus and Tim Barron's program, <laughs> but I am filling in for Tim today. He uh, unfortunately had to uh, go to a funeral in uh, Los Angeles, and so, <clears throat> hey, people, that's it. I'm Pastor Bill Walker, and it's great to be here live with you at 132 on KKVV in filling in for Mr. Tim Behrens. Thank you so much. Oh, well, that's, listen, that's our almost live audience responding to that. It's great to be with you today, and um, I'm sorry you're missing Tim. However, uh, actually I was supposed to. I uh, was supposed to interview a gentleman by the name of Joe Dallas, who is an expert in uh, family therapy, family relationships, and deals most frequently with issues of homosexuality, <clears throat> same-sex attraction. He's a man that many years ago <clears throat> came out of this um, issue himself, struggled with it, was all over the place with it, was actually part of the Metropolitan Church, which is a gay-affirming uh, church. And then as he got into the Word, um, and he was at that time involved with another man, um, he, knew, he knew he needed to leave that relationship and uh, pursue, pursue wholeness in Christ. Anyway, I was going to interview him, but he was... Uh, Unfortunately, I uh, had to back out, and we'll have to reschedule him. But I am going to actually give my own testimony today dealing with homosexuality. Now, unfortunately, in the church today, we don't hear enough about this, and we have a culture that is now going against the Word of God and saying that same-sex relationships sexual relationships are fine. In fact, we have a Supreme Court, nine unelected <laughs> uh, officials, judges, who um, ordained homosexual marriage in this country. But this is not the standard of our holy God. At the same time, we have to, as Christians, balance the understanding of this issue uh, having love, having compassion for people who uh, struggle in this area, but yet at the same time we have to uphold the standards of God. So in the few minutes that we have together, I, Pastor Bill Walker, uh, and I really should let you know that I also, uh, that my church is called the Four Seasons Church. We're at 2980 South Durango Drive. That's between West Desert Inn and West Sahara in the Durango Edna Plaza. If you turn there between those two intersections, you'll see us in big red letters on the right-hand side, the Four Seasons Church. In the few minutes we have, I, I want to try to shed some light on an area that is, is not often addressed in the church. So let me start at the beginning. I came from a very good home. I'm a baby boomer. So I was a toddler way back in the 1950s and came of age, I guess, in the late 1960s into the 1970s. And I had a wonderful upbringing. I loved where I grew up. I had a wonderful mother and a wonderful father, an older brother and a younger sister. We had a very uh, wonderful, intact home, and, and I had a happy childhood. If there was any fly in the ointment, and you know, we live on a fallen planet, and I often say, um, understanding that, I had an ideal home, but it wasn't perfect. My father was an optometrist, he was uh, had long business hours, and my father is also English heritage, our family, last name is Walker, so anyway, that family my father's side of the family could be very emotional about a lot of things, but they were not touchy-feely kind of people. And so there was sort of an emotional detachment between me and my father. Uh, he was a good father. He was a good family man. We, we did things together as a family, but I did not feel uh, close to my father. I, uh, I don't remember him really holding me or, or touching me or affirming me. Um, spending personal time with me. Now, we don't have time to 
go into all the roots of homosexuality, but it's kind of a nurture and nature situation. You know, we are, the Bible says, wonderfully made and fearfully made. And God puts certain things in us. We all have different personalities. So each child, individually, perfectly made, wonderfully made, uh, responds differently to the same home environment. And that lack of attachment to my father uh, resulted in an in same-sex attraction in my life. Uh, I noticed even as a toddler, it starts so far back that I can understand why some people think that you were born this way. But it, it, that lack of attachment to my dad resulted in, in me feeling attracted. Uh, I remember as a, as a toddler, three, four years old, having dreams that involved men I'd see on television that would be holding me, holding me on their lap, you know, attaching me, conf affirming me. So as I grew up, uh, this is all an inward struggle. Um, as I got into my teenage years, my natural attractions were not going toward uh, the opposite sex as uh, they should be under normal conditions. And uh, it was very confusing. I didn't know what to do uh, with this situation. I, I didn't know what it was called. But in my senior year, I got involved with another boy. He first became my friend, and at 16, he then became my boyfriend in secret. In those days, nobody talked about these sort of situations. You didn't see them displayed openly in small-town life outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And when that involvement started, I, part of me felt wonderful. I felt like I had discovered something that was meeting a need that had never been met in my life. However, at the same time, it was greatly confusing. It went on through my senior year in high school, into my first year in college, and um, then he transferred to my college, and we were roommates, and that proximity, that closeness, kind of bred, uh, familiarity breeds contempt, and so we kind of started to go our separate ways, and I, I just thought as a young man at 18 years old that this was just a phase, and and uh, it would pass, and and all would be well. Well, about a year later, I came to Christ, and I came to know Jesus through the mother of the boy I had been involved with. You know, that says everything about the love of Jesus, doesn't it? About salvation, that Jesus finds us exactly where our need, our brokenness is, doesn't he? So, when I became a new Christian, I felt like that part of my life was completely eradicated. It was behind me. It was my history. I didn't want to think about it. I didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to move on with life. And as a new Christian, I was excited about the things of God. I read my Bible daily. I prayed daily. I witnessed about my faith. I attended church. I did everything you could to mature and to grow in the Lord. However, those inward feelings of same-sex attraction did not leave. That was another thing. I was walking uprightly as a young man with the Lord. I was not acting out sexually. I was living celibately. And I wanted to get married. I wanted to have a normal life, so to speak. So what do I do with these feelings? So at 21, I went to a pastor here in Las Vegas, and he told me, when I counseled with him, I said, you know, what do I do with these feelings? He said, well, first of all, he said, don't tell anybody else, which is <laughs> was fine with me as a 21-year-old man back in the 1970s. Because when I went, any time I went three times to various pastors in the first seven years of my life in Jesus, and when I went to them, I would rather have told them I was a serial killer than that I was experiencing attractions toward my own gender. Because number one, all I heard were 
the dirty jokes about this kind of a situation and about, quote unquote, these kinds of people. So the first pastor I went to at 21 just told me to not to tell anybody else, just keep it to myself because I wouldn't want other people in the church that maybe had this problem being drawn to me, which was fine. Good advice, at least I thought. So I continued on in my walk with the Lord, loving the Lord, doing everything as right as I could possibly do it, occasionally dating uh, a young woman, but something was still not right. So at 24, I went a second time to a second pastor. Again, being so ashamed to bring this to another man. And he simply prayed for demons to be cast out of me. Let's just fix this fast. Well, I'll tell you, that was the solution I wanted. I, I wanted to be fixed. <laughs> but that really didn't do it. I left that meeting thinking, all was fine, but as time went on, the struggle, the inward struggle continued until at the age of 27, I hit my Waterloo. I had been a Christian seven years. I was doing everything right before the Lord. I loved him. I knew I was saved. Why am I still struggling with these attractions? So I went to a third pastor, and he was the pastor I was closest with. I was a member of his church. I led worship at his Bible studies. He saw my heart for God, and yet he also didn't understand this issue. And he told me it was simply lust. He gave me, recommended two books I read that had nothing to do actually with the issue. And then I remember walking him, into, to, walking him to his car from my apartment and watching his car drive away. So, years later, the Holy Spirit would show me that what the church did to me and the way they reacted to me was three things. Dealing with the issue of same-sex attraction or homosexuality. They said, keep, keep it in the dark, as the first pastor did. Nobody talked about it in the years I was attending church. Secondly, let's just fix you fast. If we're gonna if we're gonna help you, we just want to fix your mess real fast. We don't want to have to deal with it anymore. And thirdly, like the third pastor did, drive away. Not one of these pastors, after I had gone to them, and they all knew me well. I was attending their church at that time or their Bible studies. And if one of those men would have said, "I don't completely understand this issue, but..." I see your heart for God. You're a sheep. You're coming to a shepherd for help. And whatever I can do to help you, I will. I'm here for you. I will help you to walk with Christ as best I can. Unfortunately, after that third pastor had driven away, a few months later, the very place in the parking lot of my apartment where the pastor drove away, someone else pulled in, called my name. I turned around and saw somebody I knew from a Bible study that had, quote-unquote, come out of the homosexual life. People used to whisper about him, that he, he used to be gay. And so we developed a friendship, and in time, we got physically involved with each other. And then I was trapped, because I had gone to the church when I was doing everything right, when I was behaving right. I was simply saying, hey... I have these temptations. I don't want to act on what do I do with them, and they did not know what to do with me. So I was left alone to deal with this problem all by myself, and I was not able to do that. Not able to do that. You know, in the church, none of us are called to be lone rangers. What the world was saying was, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin. What the church in those days, and sometimes today, said was, I condemn you, go and sin no more. And so, there's a therapist by the name of Elizabeth Moberly who says, when the church says to the man or woman who struggles with homosexuality, get lost, it's no wonder they do. So that's what happened to me. I, I got lost for a while. I knew... I didn't want to let go of Jesus, but I had to keep this 
relationship I now had in secret because the church had no answers for me when I wasn't involved and I certainly now couldn't go to the church and ask for answers now that I was involved in a sinful relationship. Let me pause for a moment to remind you, you are actually, this is the time generally when Tim Barron's Jesus and Tim appears, and I am filling in. I'm Pastor Bill Walker today. While Tim is out of town, he'll be back next week. And, uh, hey, I'd like to invite you, since I'm on the air, to come and join us for services at the Four Seasons Church. We'll be there tomorrow morning, the fourth day, Super Bowl Sunday, people, of uh, February uh, 2018. Uh, we'll be there at 11 a.m. for Sunday morning worship. We're going to be looking into God's Word. We always have a wonderful time of fellowship. We're also there Wednesday evenings for Bible study at 7 p.m. and we're in the book of Acts. And we are located at 2980 South Durango Drive. That's between West Desert Inn and West Sahara on Durango. We're in the actually in the Durango Edna Plaza. If you look for the big marquee that says Durango Edna and turn there, you'll see this in big red letters on the right-hand side, the Four Seasons Church, 7 p.m. Wednesday evenings, 11 a.m. Sunday morning. We're talking today about the issue of homosexuality and how the Christian should respond to those in the church and outside the church. Well, people eventually, after many years, after too many years of being involved in a clandestine same-sex relationship, Number one, I, I refused to leave the church because I knew that Jesus was the only way to go. I knew that Jesus was the answer, but I I didn't know what to do or how to become free. You know, the Bible says this, and it's something we don't hold up often enough. Jesus said, if any man would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And that's what I had to do. I had to come to the conclusion that either I was going to walk my own way or I was going to walk in obedience as hard as that may be. Now, there's a scripture in Deuteronomy. When you deal with an issue like this, it's very complex. However, in Deuteronomy, it says this. The Lord says to us, now, what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It's not up in heaven, so you have to ask, who will ascend into heaven to get it for us and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it? Nor is it beyond the sea, so that you have to ask, who will cross the sea to get it for us and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it? No. The word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey it. You know, when people deal with life-controlling issues, whether it's drug addiction or drinking or gambling or a sexual issue, pornography, getting out is difficult. Uh, but what the Lord tells us is it's not too difficult. He acknowledges that it's difficult, but it's not too difficult because the Word is very near us. And so eventually... I had to come down to the very basic of what it means to be a Christian. You know, a, a scripture that became very real to me at that time when I was moving out of this relationship and out of this area of sin in my life was what the psalmist says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tense of the wicked. And that's the way it was with me. This is what I can tell you about same-sex sexual relationships. You know, we all need men need men friends. Women need women friends. But when those relationship cro relationships cross a, the line and become sexual, number one, they're not sanctioned by God. Anything that's not sanctioned by God is just not going to work. And I can tell you that from my own experience, the relationship became very, very messy. You had two men who were broken inside, who did not feel secure in their masculinity and were using each other and other men to try to make them feel validated. And it just doesn't work. So for me, once I became obedient 
and walked out of that. And first it was a day, and then there were two days of sobriety, and then a week, and then a month, and then several months, and then a year, and then several years, and then three years. <laughs> and then the Lord called me to get married to the woman I'm married to now. And I am supremely and divinely happy and content and have been for the last 13 years that we've been married together. So, you know, when we obey God, when we move, and, and it is moving by faith. God calls us to walk by faith. We we can ignore our temptation. We can ignore our feelings and move in the direction of faith. People say this sort of a situation is impossible to come out of. You never change. Well, I'm proof that you can. And there are many other men and women that are proof you can. If we listen to what the world says, it's in direct violation to God's laws. It's okay for two men to be sexually involved. It's okay for two men to get married. It's okay for two women to get married. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's no different for two men to raise children instead of a man and a woman. But my friends, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says that God created a perfect helpmate for Adam in the person of Eve. We need the complementariness of opposite sexes to, to bring a complete person. And you know, obeying the Lord doesn't always, in this area, doesn't always mean that a person will marry. Uh, you may walk in celibacy. But again, obedience, people, is better than sacrifice. And that's what we don't hear enough in the church today. We don't hear enough about obedience. We don't hear enough about going to the cross. Jesus told us that we have to die in order to live. Jesus says, What's it, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Whatever that that is that we feel that we put in front of God, whether it's a person or any kind of habit or pursuit of anything that puts anything or anyone ahead of serving God, ahead of obedience. You know, we often hear the expression, seeing is believing. But you know, in matters of faith, believing is seeing. You know, in the, in the area of giving or tithing, Jesus says, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men pour into your bosom. The Lord talks about tithing. He says, see if I won't pour out a blessing. But see, we have to do the action first. We have to respond in obedience before we're going to see God's promise fulfilled. And that's moving by faith. And that's what I have to do. That's what God calls every one of us to do, to walk in obedience. You know, I just encourage any of you out there, at the same time, when, when you want to know how we're to treat uh, homosexual people, if they're out in the world, hey, you don't condemn them, you don't beat them up, you don't <laughs> treat them unkindly, you treat people with love. That's what we're called to do. However, in the church, there's a whole different standard. There's a whole new set of rules, and that is following the Lord. And in the church, when we have people that deal with any kind of area, we need to have grace if, they, if they're new Christians and they're coming out of a drug problem or they're coming out of alcoholism or anything. We need to walk alongside them and encourage them and, and help them. Maybe, maybe certain kinds of addictions, certain kinds of problems uh, need psychological uh, counseling. Or, or in certain cases, we have programs here in town that help men and women. Teen Challenge, the Hoving Home here in Las Vegas, help women and men come out of alcohol and substance abuse issues. So we are to always show grace to people. And again, if somebody in the church is dealing with, with this sort of an issue and they're not completely out of it, we need to balance grace and, and love 
and yet also uphold the standards of God, uphold the truth. We would certainly never tell an alcoholic that we that because we feel compassion or sorry for them to just keep drinking, or a drug addict to keep using drugs, a person who's addicted to pornography to just keep that up, or somebody in an illicit, unkosher, unscriptural, <laughs> ungodly relationship to stay in that. Hey, if you'd like more information dealing with homosexuality or you're struggling in this area yourself, hey, contact the Four Seasons Church here in town. I'm Pastor Bill Walker, and um, I'm encouraging you to uh, contact me, the Four Seasons Church. Again, we have services at 7 p.m. Wednesday evenings. 11 a.m. will be there tomorrow morning on the 4th Super Bowl Sunday, the 4th of February. We're at 2980 South Durango Drive. That's between West, Ces West Desert Inn and West Sahara in the Durango Edna Plaza. In the meantime, I'm filling in today for Mr. Tim Behrens, and Tim will be back at this time next uh, Saturday at 1.32 here on KKVV. Hey, in the meantime, have a wonderful day in the Lord. It's been such a, a great privilege and honor to share my testimony with you. I hope it's shared and shed some light on the subject, and I hope you have a wonderful day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.